The union movement in Australia has a long history of using intimidation, threats and physical violence to coerce employers and workers into complying with union demands. These days, the unions are a shadow of their former selves, but in 1971, they were at their height. The Actors and Announcers Equity Association of Australia published a list of approved theatrical agents, that is, agents which had agreed to all union demands. If venues booked through agencies which were not on the list, the union threatened to picket those venues, obstructing the respective public thoroughfares outside the same and thereby using threatening and abusive language and gestures on or near the said public thoroughfares to others who might seek to enter the clubs and thereby preventing others who had a lawful right to enter the clubs from so doing with the intent that the clubs would cease to deal with the plaintiff. Charming. Sid Ross was an agency not on the union approved list and as a result of the union bullying, venues stopped dealing with Sid Ross. The agency sued the union for damages in the tort of intimidation. Justice of Appeal Mason said, There is strong authority for the proposition that if A, intending to injure C, by threatening B, that he will commit an unlawful act as against B, unless B refrains from exercising his legal right to deal with C, induces B to refrain from so doing, A commits a wrong actionable at the suit of C. Decoded, if the union, intending to injure Sid Ross agency, threatens the club that the union will commit an unlawful act against the club unless the club refrains from dealing with Sid Ross agency, the union commits a wrong actionable at the suit of Sid Ross agency. The question then was whether the conduct was unlawful. Justice of Appeal Mason said the form of picketing threatened involved obstruction of the thoroughfares and besetting of those who wished to enter the clubs, thereby constituting a nuisance and an interference with their rights. The effect alleged is that of preventing persons from entering the clubs. In these circumstances, the acts threatened, if carried out, would have constituted torts actionable at the suit of the clubs. From this case, we confirm the economic tort of intimidation. If I intimidate people into refusing to deal with you, then I am liable to pay you damages. Mm-hmm.